Welcome to Pastoring God's Sheep. I'm your host, Timothy, Pastor Timothy, bringing you this program on the Marketplace Network dot TV. My guest today is the well-known co-founder and prophet of Marketplace in Action, Dr. Ken. Dr. Ken, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you so much for having me. Our topic is power. Mm. There are many types of power, aren't there? Mm -hmm. There is the power of electricity, okay. government power, mm. the power of speech. Many five-year-olds like watching Mighty Pups, The Avengers, and PJ Maxx. Each of them have their own special powers, which at the age of five are fun to pretend you have. But these are not the powers we will be talking about. We have power that has been given to us by God through Christ's blood that he shed for us. What is this power that God has given to us? Before God ascended into heaven, he told his apostles to remain in Jerusalem until they received what God promised them. What is this that God promised them? The Holy Spirit. And I thought it was so interesting that you would start out with that. And Matthew 10, 1, for those of you who are taking notes, or it says, I will give you power. It's very important that uh, that will set the stage of what he does. He gives each and every one of us. And we're the apostles. We're grafted in that. We look at every time you see the apostles, you should see us. We're the Gentiles, same, apostles, same thing. Look for us to be the same. Let me give you a thought real quick. We're always learning, but we never are able to come to the knowledge of truth. That's 2 Timothy 3, 7. I think it's so important uh, in our Christian walk, we always want to learn. Well, teach me, lay hands on me. I've been waiting for 20 years for the big apostle, the prophet, the man of God, the woman of God to lay hands on me and I will ascend to a whole new level. Well, that could happen, but in reality is God is our teacher. That's what we got to start looking for. I'm not saying you can't learn from Pastor Tim or any of our programmers, especially Bishop, the other co-founder here at the Marketplace Network. It's a, he teaches a university. It's a much higher level. But I was astounded by how he, each and every one he instills that they have the power. It says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, we could covet the gifts. And I encourage you to do so. That means the power of God. Pastor, your thought of the power of God. The power of God is, well, let's go to John 14, Good. verses 15 through mm -hmm. 20. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, which is an intercessor, a comforter, mm. description of the Holy Spirit to keep you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Now the Holy Spirit has been with us since the second that we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, 
you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. The day that is ta that this talks about is the day of Pentecost, the beginning of the church. What is the day of Pentecost? What is the power that we receive? Mm, that's a good question. I know Pentecost was 50 days after the apostles received the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Same thing. I thought it was so interesting. It's a holiday, as a, as a matter of fact. It's a Jewish feast, but we could also say it's a Christian feast as well. Here's a thought, Proverbs 15, 24. Here's another power of scripture you might want to write down, and it's from the CEB, the Comish English Bible. It says, for those who have insight, in other words, or have wisdom, life is an upward path. In other words, God is going to bring you up to a higher calling. Before the end of this broadcast, I want to prove to you, I prophesy August as the book of Acts. It's the book of Acts is there's 31 miracles in it. Each day, there's 31 days in August that if you will look for a miracle, now let's not get carried away. Let's not look outside and look for a yacht or, you know, uh, Mercedes Benz or, you know, some, you know, uh, uh, one of the fashion models out there for you to hang out with. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you'll truly believe God inwardly, believe God. If you're looking for him to speak audibly outside, you missed the whole thing. He'll speak to you in that small, small voice here because he lives in you if you truly are spirit-filled. And he's going to say to you, today I give you this. Whatever it is, you get a check in the mail, somebody's kind to you, you get favor for something, that's a miracle. Start counting your blessings. Start looking at the miracle. God is grooming you. If you're not appreciative of the small things, why the heck would he give you the big things? Wouldn't you agree, Pastor? Amen. Amen. Acts 1, verse 4. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which mm. you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now the baptism of the Holy Spirit may be defined as that work whereby the Spirit of God places the believer into union with Christ and into union with other believers in the body of Christ mm. at the moment of salvation. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was predicted by John the Baptist, Mark 1, verse 8, and by Jesus before he ascended to heaven. Acts 1 verse 5. When it says the union with union with Christ, what are they, what does that mean? Do they want? Hear me. And this is a special thought for you today. Second scripture is Isaiah 11:2 in the CEB, the Common English Bible. The wisdom of God, this will really help you because you're going to be one with Christ. How did he know what to do and say and do? Watch this. The Lord's spirit rested upon him. That means if it rested on him, it'll rest on us too because he was our model. He's the, uh, the, the one we have to look to. He's like our hero. He's like uh, the, the all fathers. He, he's like the, the truly the champion we all look to be. And it also says the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of planning, and strength, meaning planning what your life's going to be, what he has for you, the purpose that you're called to do. So the spirit of knowledge and, and the fear of the Lord, that's so important, the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? It's not like you're terrified of him. You're just afraid to disappoint him. Hear me, brothers and sisters. One last thought. Let mankind, and I'll tell you how we get this oneness. I'll tell you how this all plays out for us, how the Holy Spirit comes on us. Now watch this. Let us make mankind in our image and our likeness. That's Genesis 1, 26, 27. We hear this all the time, right? 
How, because he manifests it through us. In other words, it says, rain remain in me, like Pastor said, and I'll remain in you, John 15, 4. Remember when he said that earlier? Now watch this. Uh, Matthew, or I'm sorry, John 5, 5 says, I'm the vine, this, this will free you, I promise you, if you just bear with me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you join, join, what do you say, union, join, to me, I'll be with, producing plenty of fruit through you. Separate from me, you won't be able to do anything. Let me wrap this up, what this all means. Now, if he's the vine and we're the branch, we can't do anything without him. But you know what he's done? He is so clever and so brilliant, and he wants to use us. He wants to work through us. What did the Father do? He worked through Jesus. So what does Jesus do? He works through us. So he set it up that he has to work through the vine. The vine can't, the branch can't actually do really anything but through the vine. You see, I mean, he can do anything he wants, but he chooses. He set it up that way. He needs us too to work through us. So we have to cooperate. So watch, if we'll cooperate with the Holy Spirit, if we'll cooperate what he's actually telling us to do. Now, what is the Holy Spirit? We already know what that is. That's the Spirit of God that came. Along with Jesus Christ, the, the three in one gods, if you will, live in us so we can express what he has through us. He'll manifest through us if we'll let him. So why does he do it? Because they can't see God, they, they, people will think away, oh, I got healed, I got this money, uh, I, I re restored my relationship because I'm so great. No, you're not. It's the Father that does all that. I mean, it's all three in one, but He's the one that does it. But if He doesn't work through somebody, if somebody doesn't pray for you or, or is praying for you, if somebody doesn't encourage you, or like pastor's teaching, if you don't listen to pastor's teaching, you won't know how to do it or how to go about it. But I encourage you to get that down. He uses us through us to do the work of miracles for his goodness for all. Pastor, wouldn't you agree? Yes, absolutely. Now, Acts 2, verses 1 through 4, tell us, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, all filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire mm. that separated and came to rest on each of them. Of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. What was this tongue of fire? It's in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11. It has the nine gifts of the Spirit. One of them is the gift of tongues. We can go so many ways with this, so I have to tie myself down to this one thought. Is I believe, remember when the apostles preached, there was, they were uneducated fishermen, most of them, not all of them. There was a few that were educated, like Matthew, the tax collector. He was a historian, if you will. Here's my point, is a lot of them that came to uh, see the apostles preach didn't speak the same languages. There were several thousand different languages, but they, because of tongues, they understood each and every person perfectly like they were speaking in their language. What is tongues? The gift of tongues is from the Holy Spirit. It's a special language between you and your father. I don't care if you're male or female, I don't care how old you are, if you don't have the gifts of tongue, you have to get to a spirit-filled church or have somebody that's a mature believer lay hands on you and the word says lay hands on them and they'll get the spirit of tongues and they'll start prophesying. That doesn't mean they're a prophet. Now watch this, how I got it, I started reading the scriptures out loud and tried to start to memorize them and I started speaking in tongues because the gift fell on me. It's very important you have that. That gives you power. You really need that gift. So another thing is notice when Jesus said to tell, uh, ask, uh, he says to tell us to ask for whatever we want in John 15, seven and eight. Remember when he said that? Well, actually it's a command. So if we ask, in Jesus' name, according to his word, he says we'll be able to have it. Pastor, in your opinion, you've preached the word for so many years. When you start speaking his word, isn't it amazing how it starts coming to pass? Yeah, it absolutely is. Absolutely is. Now, I personally 
received the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit four, about maybe four years ago. Praise God. And it's the power that he has given me since then, Amen. the miracles that I have seen since then have been amazing. One, for example, that you could uh, go with testify. testify on is when our one of our friends, uh, David, brought a lady to us at the end of one of our programs. Hmm. Dr. Ken and I were getting ready to leave the building. We were walking out the door when David brought this lady to us and says, we need to pray for her. Now, she honestly looked like she was ready to die in the next 30 seconds. We took turns. We laid hands on, on her. We said a couple of words, and we left. We, you know, and we forgot about it. What was it, about a month later? I was invited to a Halloween. They were teaching the kids to believe, and that's another teaching, don't go out on a Halloween. You can't go on a day for, of the enemy and pretend like it's a, a day for Christians. Hear what I'm saying. So I went there to dispel this rumor that Halloween is not for us Christians. We have to denounce it. I don't care if we're dressed up as, uh, you know, uh, Apostle Paul. That's not going to work. It's, you're going on an outing that they started. You hear what I'm saying? Here's my point. As I got there, uh, David testified. He says, oh, Dr. Ken, I forgot to tell you. When you were a pastor, we were praying for him. And we didn't feel any anointing. In fact, him and I complained how tired we were, and I didn't really feel anything. I, I pray that she gets it. She was an export-import uh, businesswoman that had to go to South America immediately. They released her from the hospital because they said they couldn't do anything for her. She said she had all kinds of blood problems, all kinds of health problems. She had all kinds of uh, 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 something, some kind of disease that attacked her muscle. I mean, on it was a laundry list. And, and my mouth is hanging up, and I said, what are you talking about? He goes, didn't you get the pictures? I go, what pictures? He shows me the pictures. The next day, a, a pastor didn't see him. She looked like she was a model. She was a beautiful young girl. She wasn't real, real young. She was like in her 40s. But she looked like she just walked out of a, a magazine shoot. She looked vibrant. That was the next morning. She sent the picture to David, and it had the time stamp right there. So praise God. See, you don't know how God's going to use you. He has to work through you. So if you don't feel the anointing, that doesn't mean you don't have the anointing, because he is the anointing. But I want to say this real quick. Well, how do you know you're going to be used in signs and wonders? And I will go back to one more testimony that Pastor prayed. It's Isaiah 8, 18. The children are for signs and wonders. Write that down. Isaiah 8, 18. That's what he says. The children I give you. The Father is speaking to uh, Jesus. As I give you, or... To us, same thing. He's giving us the children, in other words, converts that are coming to be used for signs and wonders for his glory. It's all for his glory, for his purpose. But we get to be in the act of being used. Now watch this. Uh, the same thing, a week later, a pastor and I, his car wasn't running that well. And we've been preaching on healing and teaching. And, there, you know, signs of wonder. There was a lot of unbelievers there. You know, we, we, there was a few healings here and there. But at least we're having something to keep our faith going. But there wasn't a ton of them. And we were kind of disappointed. We uh, started going out to the car, and the car wouldn't start. And he couldn't get the lights on. So a pastor says, you know, we've been teaching on the signs and wonders in Jesus' name. And I go, let me do it. Let there be light. No, I said, and turn the light on or I pray there's light coming down forever or something like that. Nothing happened. And pastor reminded me, is that the word? And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, in the Bible it says, let there be light. And he hit the car like that and the lights came on and they never, they, they never went down since. Now, interesting, before that happened, I didn't go far enough back. The day before, we were praying, let there be light. That was me saying it. Pastor didn't say anything at that point. And we drove by three police cars. We believed it was pitch black. There was no lights on either side, the front or back. We believed the lights were still on, but we didn't see them. We didn't have the, the sight. That's what Pastor taught on the next night when he laid hands on the car. He said, let there be light. And we're not seeing it spiritually. He says, doctor, get your spiritual eyes open. And the light came. 
Isn't that interesting? So whether it be machinery, whether it be people, if you declare the word of the God and by faith, you have to claim it by faith and, and the people around you have to have it, uh, claim it by faith. Of course, the machinery can't claim anything. You just lay hands on it and just believe. Let God be God and watch what will happen. Isn't that the truth? Yes, absolutely. And taking it back a little bit further, the night before that, I was, I was living in the city of Paris at the time, here in Cal Southern California. I had to drive home. Now this is when this problem with the headlights started. I, the, I had no headlights whatsoever. I drove on the freeway back to the house in Paris with, I thought, no lights at all. I thought I was risk, you know, taking a risk. I passed at least two highway patrol on the freeway and six county sheriff units. None of them even Thank paid God. attention to me. So the miracles are out there. You may not see them, you may not understand them, but they're there and they're there when you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Can I make a comment, Pastor? Exodus 7, 8 in the NIV says, God speaking to Moses says, show the king, in other words, Pharaoh, a miracle. He's not a believer. Now, be careful. Don't run out to any believer and go, let me show you that I'm going to raise the dead. Calm down. There has to be an unction from the inside. God has to orchestrate it and speak to you in that small, still voice. If you have an outly voice, you might be drinking too much coffee. I'm not saying he doesn't speak outwardly, <laughs> but it's, if he's inside you, why would he speak from the outside? He'd speak from the inside. You hear what I'm saying? That, hence the small, still voice. So here's what I'm saying is he, he leads you and you'll get good at this. After a while, if you turn, turn everything down and say, Lord, I'm listening to you. If you don't hear anything, praise God. Wait till some other time. But the unctions will come more and more after you train yourself to listen. So when you do this, it, it, let's say you lay your hands on the car like Pastor did. And by the way, Paris was an hour and a half away from where the studio was. So that was a long drive. I mean, it's not even a coincidence. You can't even explain that. So don't explain it. It's God. Praise Him. That's all you have to do. Thank you, Lord. Always appreciate and praise Him. You've got to recognize, that's why I'm declaring August is a book of Acts. There's a miracle each day for you if you will look for one. Well, at my age, I look, when I get up in the morning, I count that as number one miracle. The second thing, especially in our, I'm here in the studio in Southern California, you know, we get a chance to eat daily. There's two thirds of the world that does not. Now think about that for a minute. That's a miracle in itself, or it doesn't have clean water. So I've just done three miracles already today. So if we are grateful like that and expect God to show up. Guess what will happen? God will show up. Your thought, Pastor. Amen. He definitely will. And there's one other miracle that we witnessed. And I'm going to let Dr. Ken tell you about it. And that's that young man at the church in mm. Los Angeles. Yeah, um, the pastor and I got invited to film in Los Angeles. We were filming in Orange County where we both lived at the time. I still do. The pastor lives in Las Vegas right now with his uh with his relatives. Here's what happened. Is there was a Chinese church, neither one of us speaks Chinese. Somebody asked us as we're standing out contemplating. It, it was a pretty tough schedule, our TV shoots, and we, we usually do three to five shows a night. It was grueling, and it was played in all over the uh, Asian market at that time. He, here's what happened. Somebody asked to come out with a young man that was athletic and had never been able to run uh, since he was 18. I guess he was in his late 20s, I'm guessing. I don't know exactly, because we couldn't understand it. We didn't know what he was talking about. So he comes out there, and I asked him a few questions. He didn't know what we were talking about. He doesn't speak English. So we both laid hands on him. Honest to God, the prayer was, in Jesus' name, you're healed. And we both said, amen. And that was, we didn't give it another thought. We're up on the set, and it, I, I kid you not, I see somebody running around the church. I, you know, it's a big church, so I couldn't really get the picture, because the lights are so bright in our face when you're on TV. And, and I'm, uh, I didn't think anything about it. So Pastor and I went on for two, three, four weeks. And finally it dawned upon us, Pastor says, well, wait a minute. 
don't we know who that person is? Look how look he's smiling, he's laughing. Wait a minute, that's him walking off. He couldn't even walk. Was that the young man that we prayed for a month ago? And I said, it was. Maybe it is. Praise God. But see, you have to look for it. You have to expect it. You have to understand it. Because of time, Pastor, let me say this. How do we know? Look, watch this. Joseph, Genesis 41 to 56 to 57, saw the supernatural miracle of the economy. Now, remember, he's the one that came up with the grain idea. Everybody gave a percent, and everybody at the end of it all sold everything they had, their children, their home, their farm, themselves, into slavery, everything. The phantom was that great. But because of his wisdom, through God, supernaturally, he saved the whole world at that time. How about you? Can you do something like that? Who says you can't? I'm here to say there's a miracle in your mouth. You have to explain it not explain what it is, you have to, to expect it, but you have to speak it. You start speaking these words out in faith. You start, and I'll show you where it is. Romans 15, 19, it says, by the power of the signs and wonders throughout the power of the Spirit of God. In other words, through Christ, we can do all things. And the last thing I'll say, and I'll, uh, Pastor will close this out. First Peter 2, 9, it says that we are chosen by God, chosen to him, to do the ministry work. So if that doesn't build your faith, exactly what happens, and I'll show you where that is. In the morning, Lord says, you hear my voice in the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. Psalms five and three. Why did I tell you that? In the morning is when you gotta get up and start praying. You gotta start listening. You gotta start writing down what he wants and you try that in 30 days, I promise you, do that every day for 30 minutes, for 30 days, and watch what will God do. Amen. Pastor, your thought. Okay, we're about ready to close. So facts about spiritual baptism. Fact one, there is a baptism in the Holy Spirit. Fact two, Jesus was the first to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Mm. Fact three, this baptism was in fulfillment of prophecy. And to see that prophecy, go to your Bibles and look up Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Amen. And the fourth fact is men in general were not baptized in the Spirit until Pentecost and until Jesus was glorified. Spirit baptism is not a filling or a measure of the Spirit. Spirit baptism is the immersion or burial of the believer in the Spirit at which time he receives the Spirit in his life in all fullness mm -hmm. and without measure and is endowed with power from on high to work, to do the works of Christ. It is the same full anointing of the Spirit that Christ received. Dr. Ken, can you quickly pray us out? Well, because of time, we ran out of time. At 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, look it up. It talks about growing body parts. I just want, that'll be your homework until you see Pastor Tim again. Until next time, this is Pastor Tim, his show, Shepherding God's People. I'm Dr. Ken, the co-founder of the Marketplace Ministry. We'll see you next week on uh, Pastoring God's Sheep.